You're listening to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, the community for the best sales and marketing professionals in the aviation industry. Your hosts, John and Paula Williams, are your sales and marketing test pilots. They take the risks for you and share strategies, relevant examples, hacks, and how-tos. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you won't miss a thing. Welcome to Aviation Marketing Hangar Flying, episode number 22. Today we are talking about competition, which usually isn't competition, right, John? You'll have to explain that to these people. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, well, this actually started, or the reason that we're talking about this today is because we had um, one of our copywriters who was in the masterclass um, concerned about um, fishing in our pond, I guess we would call it. Um, <laughs> he said, you know, would you be okay if I approached someone else who's in the masterclass uh, with an offer of my services um, doing copywriting? And of course the answer is yes, go right ahead. Um, I mean, that's what the whole thing's about, right? Is networking. Exactly. So, you know, if you're in the, the aviation marketing masterclass and you are not getting more business from it, I would be very concerned about that. So, um, you know, that's kind of the whole reason for the masterclass. And, you know, his concern, I totally understand because he does copywriting, ABCI does copywriting. He didn't want to um, feel like he's, he's poaching in our forest, as they You say. keep using the word copywriting. I keep using the word copywriting. That's because copywriting is a good word. Well, but aviation people tend to not understand that word. Okay, well... What copywriting is, and I guess this is probably as good a place as any to uh, to explain that, um, it's basically writing the copy um, or writing the words that show up in your um, marketing materials, and that could be on your website, in your brochures, um, you know, articles. Um, you know, there's lots of places that copywriting. Most happen. people will see it as content. Yeah. So content writing, copywriting, it's really all the same stuff. Um, if you want to get really nerdy about it, then there is a, a field called um, advertising copywriting, uh, where you're actually the purpose of your writing is to sell something, as opposed to like technical writing, where the purpose of your writing is to explain something. Um, but copywriting usually encompasses both of those things, right? See? Now they know. Now they know. Okay, cool. So, um, as much as I appreciate people being very considerate of, um, you know, being sensitive to. Mm to uh, other people's territories, if we want to call it that. Uh, I am not as concerned about competition, and I think, you know, that's, you share that opinion, as uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should, uh, shouldn't should presume, but um, competition, I think people spend way too much time worrying about it and way too much energy doing things that um, are to counter their comp- competition when they really should be spending that energy working on things that are, are um, worth worrying about, right? Of course. Of course. Okay. So to that end, we actually got an email yesterday from Mike Stadola, who is the older brother of Jeff Stadola, who also happens to be in the master class. You see how this is is going here? Everybody is related to everybody, and everybody is, is in everybody's business. Well, um, business related, at least. Exactly. Right. So I'm going to read this to you because I think this is a fantastic explanation, and I don't usually read on these things, but this is so well worded that I think this is worth it. So bear with me for just a minute. Think for a second about your favorite restaurant. Got it? Of course. Okay. Now ask yourself, when was the last time you went there, and have you been to any other restaurants since you last went there? Okay. Have you? Of course. Okay. Yeah, for most of us, the answer is probably yes. So my next question is, if that's your favorite restaurant, why wouldn't you always go there? Well, there's a number of reasons. Exactly. We travel and so forth. Yeah. So the simple truth of the matter is even your very best customers, clients, or patients are probably cheating on you. (laughs) Those with the greatest desire are most likely the ones who consume products or services similar to yours. No matter how many products or services you offer, you will never be able to keep up with their desire to consume. At GKIC, we know that even though we have over 90 products, seven events, Five monthly publications and three coaching groups, our very best members are also purchasing marketing materials or going to other events and getting publications from others. 
When I was a real estate agent working with buyers, I knew that they were very likely to also be stopping by homes listed as for sale by owner and at new developments without me. It's a fact of life and you have two choices. One, you can ignore it, fight it, and bemoan the fact that humans are about as loyal as a rooster in a hen house. I don't find this option very appealing. Or second, you can create partnerships, joint ventures, and cross-promotional agreements with other businesses that serve your market. And that's really what the masterclass is is all about. Um, Of course, ABCI offers maybe 15 products, (laughs) one membership program, uh, one publication. Actually, we've got a couple of books and one newsletter. But we know that people who need marketing Uh, services and marketing advice are going to get them from us and from other people. And you'll notice like in our book club, we include other books besides the one that we wrote, right? (laughs) It would be fairly narrow if we didn't. So um, it's pretty But those guys have been in business for 30 or 40 or 50 years more than we have. Exactly. And even GKIC, John and I have probably spent... You don't want to know how much money we... (laughs) We couldn't, we couldn't justify that if we didn't have a company to, uh, of a lot of clients to help us support that. So, I mean, it would just... Exactly. And GKIC is just one of the places that um, we are members and we get, get information from. Uh, and we've been in a lot of their, their groups. We've bought a lot of their publications and things like that. But um, we also use Sandler Sales. We use Infusionsoft University. Um, you know, there's a lot of places. And as you know, I probably read three or four different marketing books a month, new ones, as well as the ones that we have in our uh, our book club. So. And the Pacific Institute. And there's a whole laundry list of mm-hmm. sales and marketing organizations and, and associations that we are or were members of. Exactly. So, you know, do we see those guys as competition? Hardly. Hardly. (laughs) Exactly. So, you know, we don't feel like we're precisely in competition with those folks. And with this particular copywriter who's in the master class, we may be in direct competition for one of our products. But in the vast scheme of things, copywriters are so different from each other. Um, You know, when we are working with a, a client on content, it's often that, uh, you know, our style is not exactly perfect for them. We need somebody who has more of a history background or more of a military background or more of a news background or, you know, whatever style it's, is needed uh, for that for that client. So, Or even depending on the particular writer's associations, we have a writer who works for Forbes as an example. Exactly. And some so. write for other aviation publications <clears throat> and, um, you know, depending on the type of, of client, uh, we can't serve everyone. We can't be the best solution for everyone. So um, we like to spread the love a little bit and make sure that uh, everybody's getting the best service, whether that's from us or from someone else. So another example of that is we just put together for um, a, a response for the call for speakers for NBAA, um, a, several companies who create products that look like they may be in competition with each other if you don't look hard enough. Um, Vlog does aircraft digital logbooks. Synapse MX, that's Shane Ballman's company, um, does aircraft maintenance um, software uh, designed for shops to to uh, be more efficient and, and effective. Eagle Cap Software has a Squawk app, uh, which is uh, has a completely different purpose and emphasis. And ATP has their compliance navigator for ADs and and other kinds of publications that people need. So are those things in competition with each other? Probably not. Probably not. You know, they, um, they really have a different audience and a different purpose. And uh, even when you look at other aviation marketing companies, <sighs> heaven forbid, you know, um, BDN uh, does a really great job on booths, uh, trade show booths. In fact, I just commented on uh, the Robertson's Fuel Systems booth that they did for um, HAI. They did a really nice job, and it's a beautiful booth. Um, that is not our forte, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to uh, to praise a, a competitor or somebody that looks like a competitor when they do a great job. A Greetman Group is local to Wichita, so um, if somebody needs a group that's local to Wichita and is really tied in with the local media there, the Greetman Group is a great option. Um, Rocco Cipriano, he's in New York, also a great guy if you can handle his accent. <laughs> but 
<laughs> we make fun of East Coast accents, but that's just us. I'm sure they make fun of us as well. Of course they do. Of course they do. So our biggest competition is not these guys, you know, BDN and Greetman Group and, and, and Rocky. Um, it's companies, aviation companies that try to do it themselves uh, and do random acts of marketing or, and do them badly <laughs> or companies that don't do enough marketing at all. Um, and those are the people that we really want to get as clients. So we don't see it as, um, as directly competing against those other marketing companies. We see our best opportunities as people who are not doing enough marketing or people who don't, aren't using anyone and, uh, are trying to handle all of these tasks and, and, uh, do the best they can with all this expertise in house, which they may not have. Right. See, but the uh, random acts of marketing, every act of marketing is random unless it's integrated with others. Exactly. Right. And we've talked about that a lot. But uh, no matter who you get to do a fabulous website or a fabulous brochure or a fabulous whatever, if it's not tied in with a marketing system um, and not measurable and, uh, you know, you're not getting great results from it that you can see, then uh, that would be what we call a random act of marketing. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we had a great time. And, uh, you know, you can see we if you are watching this on the web, you can see that we're on camera this time, which is unusual. Yeah, we're just trying something different to see how it works or doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Actually, we set up for a, a client last week and uh, or a client this week, um, depending on when you're watching this this podcast and uh, thought, well, we have the setup going on. We try doing this live instead of using slides. So let us know what you think. Leave a comment and uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. See you next time.